Hello friends, today we are going to play a little game, and that game is called Are the people who are mad about the thing actually people who read the book? Or did they make up something to get mad about that didn't actually happen and then got mad at the thing that they made up in their own imaginations? Well, if you've spent any time on this channel at all, you probably know what the answer to that one's gonna be, so we are gonna dive deep into that today. If you guessed that it was B, and that the people who are upset right now didn't actually read the book, you win. Yay, I'm so proud of you. On this channel, I have roasted and torn apart many self-help gurus and particularly given scathing reviews to the self-help books that I think are put out by a lot of grifters who are just trying to make a quick buck on trying to tell people that their current lives are inadequate. Boom. Roasted. However, there has been one particular self-help guru that I have always defended throughout the entire process because I truly have always believed that this person really does have valuable advice and valuable information to offer, and I personally found her advice to be life-changing to me. Now, this isn't someone that I think you have to follow necessarily, nor do I think anyone's required to like or dislike anyone or like or dislike any book, but for me personally, the one guru that I have always followed and always found to be helpful to me. I've always found to be honest and genuine and actually skilled at the thing that she's talking about has been Marie Kondo. I've talked about her on this channel many times before. I did a video about two years ago when after on my second channel, Your Morning Guru, we followed Marie Kondo for two weeks. We read her book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and then I put her advice into practice to try to make my home and my life a little bit more organized, and honestly, she helped me a lot. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions about Marie Kondo out there is that she's only for minimalists, that she's trying to make us get rid of things at all costs and wants us to have this minimalistic, very neat and organized style of living. That's a common criticism that I see of her. But here's the thing. If you've actually read her book and read her work, you know that that's not true at all. And I'm going to break down the details in today's video of what Marie Kondo's advice is actually about and why certain people are getting mad at her and trying to cancel her for things that she never really said and things that were just gross misinterpretations of her entire philosophy. If you guys can see the stuff behind me just in this room, and this is just this room, you haven't seen the other rooms in my house. If you just look at this room, you can probably tell that I am not a minimalist. I am probably the farthest thing from a minimalist. I may go so far as to call myself a maximalist, although when I've looked up maximalist interior design and home decor, it usually involves a lot more like floral 70s wallpaper, which, trust me, if I could have, I would, okay? I would. I like wallpaper. Cancel me daddy, okay? Where's the cancel me daddy candle? There it is. Anyway, I'm a collector of a lot of things. I love collecting books. I love especially collecting toys. A fellow collector? Just last night, the night before I filmed this video, I found two discontinued versions of the Cecile and Marie Grace American Girl dolls who were best friends in New Orleans in the 1850s, and I had to have them, so I ordered them used on Mercari, and they're coming to my house soon to join the entire other collection of toys. Minimalism is absolutely not something for me. And that's why I think I'm a good testament as to why Marie Kondo's advice can span across a wide variety of different styles of organization organization or different styles of decor without it having to really take away from who you truly are. And I think there's a lot of misconceptions about her that are fueling the recent wave of criticism that she's been getting. So in today's video, we are going to talk about Marie Kondo, what her advice actually says, and why all the Twitter Karens who are mad at her didn't read the fucking book. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should take up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. What's up, my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy, and welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business. Today, we are talking about the self-help guru who authored a book that I actually found quite life-changing, as the title would suggest in The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. If you don't remember, in the summer of 2021, I actually did a video that was a tier ranking chart of all the business and self-help books and general non-fiction advice type of books that I had read over the past couple years, where I ranked them on a tier chart 
chart and it went from the the top row of the best score you could get was to be life-changing and then like the worst score you could get was for your book to be a complete scam that was harmful to society or something there was a whole spectrum in there but Marie Kondo's book The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up was one of the very few books that ended up at the very top of that chart because it is one of my favorite self-help books of all time and you guys know how critical of self-help books I can be now as a disclaimer I'm not saying that you necessarily have to like her or that you necessarily have to follow her advice I'm just saying that when we look at a lot of the criticism she's getting online a lot of it is completely unfounded and whether or not you like someone or you find their advice helpful let's keep the criticism about things that actually happened rather than gross misinterpretations you're the cause of all my their problems! That's my entire thing about that. But before we get deeper into it, please don't forget to subscribe it because multiple times a week I put out new videos all about books and business. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to my second channel, Your Morning Guru, which is the channel where we covered Marie Kondo extensively in 2021 and we lived like her for a week. So that was pretty exciting. On that channel lately, we've been doing a lot of writing challenges and fitness challenges. So that, ch that channel is kind of like a morning radio show that my best friend and I host to get you guys up in the morning to get you ready for the day and also we regularly try to do self-improvement challenges of our own Superstar. lately we've been doing writing streams so if that's something you enjoy or if you miss when i used to do writing sprint streams on this channel i'm still doing them i'm just doing them on that channel instead so make sure you're subscribed to that but with all of that in mind let's get into talking about marie kondo marie kondo first became famous a couple years ago when she released her hit book the life-changing magic of tidying up and subsequently received a series on netflix about how to tidy up your house where she went to different people's houses helped them get things organized and helped them declutter with things that they didn't really need anymore now a few years ago when marie kondo first started getting big a lot of memes about her started coming out things about does this spark joy does this not spark joy i think one of my favorite memes i saw was like someone's cell phone and it was like a text notification and it said this sparks joy and then it was like a phone call notification and it was like this does not spark joy so just a lot of things about things sparking joy now if you're not really familiar with her work what that basically means is her overall method is if you have a disorganized house if your house is cluttered if it feels cramped if it feels stressed if you're having a hard time cleaning up your home what you need to do above all else is make sure that the things in your home are things that you actually want or need. And the way that she recommends doing that is by going through different items by category, taking every item out, touching each individual item that you own and asking yourself, does this spark joy? Now the idea behind taking out every individual item and touching it is to acknowledge everything that you have because it's very easy to just say, oh, well, I don't really need to look in this drawer. It's, it's clean enough. But then of course that's just gonna clutter again and the cycle will repeat. So if you wanna get yourself into a position where you can be organized in the long run, you want to be able to really identify what every single object in your house is. Otherwise, it's it's going to be a little hard to keep it organized if you can't even identify everything. So you want to take every single item in your house, you want to touch it, and you want to say, does this spark joy? And it's sparking joy can be for a variety of reasons, whether that's, yes, this sparks joy because I need to use it every day, and without it, I'd feel lost. Or it can spark joy if you say, yeah, seeing this reminds me of a, of a positive memory, and every time I look at it, it makes me feel happy. When you look at an item of clothing and you touch it and you say, where did I wear this? I feel really good about myself, versus an item of clothing where you say, ugh, I dread having to wear this because I only wear it when everything else is in the laundry. Well, then that's not an item that sparks joy, and your life would probably be better with Without it. Sometimes it can be hard to get rid of those items that don't spark joy just because if you're like me you might have some hoarding tendencies. I learned after studying Marie Kondo that hoarding tendencies is a symptom of OCD which I do have so that all makes sense. I definitely am not like a full-on hoarder but throughout a lot of my life I've had a lot of issues with struggling emotionally to let things go. The finality of throwing something in the trash can or putting something in a bag to give to someone else always makes me feel like oh but what if I will need it in the future. And that's kind of how she breaks down her advice, is that the reason we tend to hoard items is either from a fear of the future or an attachment to the past. And if we can learn to get rid of the things that aren't sparking joy for us right at this very moment, then we can be more present in, in the right now. We can live in the moments a little more while still keeping the things that we know we'll need for the future because if we need something badly enough, it's probably gonna spark some kind of joy when we touch it. Now, this advice may not work for you, but it worked wonders for me. I went through my closet that week, I pulled out a ton of clothes, I got rid of 12 entire garbage bags full of clothes 
clothing. And since then, I've been a lot more selective about the items of clothes I buy, trying to buy more high quality things, trying to buy a lot less fast fashion when possible, and just trying to find things that really bring out how I feel and having more fun with style and things like that, rather than just keeping items because I feel like, oh, I might potentially need this in the future. And for me, it was like, I would have trouble getting rid of a pair of jeans with holes in them, or like, I'd have trouble getting rid of a shirt that had like a giant rip down the side, or things that were objectively broken. Just because the act of throwing things away was hard for me. The act of getting rid of something made me feel like I was being wasteful. It made me feel like I was a bad person. Now, we can talk about the environmental impacts of throwing things in the trash, but I think that's kind of a separate topic. But when it comes to what Marie's advice boils down to is that when we are able to identify what things are actually giving us joy, we can have a house where the items are all things that are beneficial to us. It doesn't have to, like, and I mean, obviously there are exceptions, like she doesn't tell you to throw out like your medical bills. Like I get medical bills and I'm like, this does not spark joy. There are exceptions to every rule, right? But overall, I personally found her advice to be helpful. She did get a lot of backlash a couple years ago because she talked about how in her house, she only likes to keep 30 books maximum. And if she ever gets more than 30 books, she goes and she donates some, or she gives them away, or she gets rid of them, sells them to a used bookstore, whatever. She doesn't like to keep more than 30 books in her home at once. And even in her book, she was like, when you're done reading this book, if this book isn't sparking joy for you actively right now, I won't be offended if you get rid of it. Give it to someone else. Get rid of it. I don't care. Please do. And, you know, I thought that made perfect sense. Now, you can probably tell that I have way more than 30 books in my house. And a lot of people, especially in book collecting communities, got a little upset when she said this. But when I saw this, I was like, well, she didn't tell you you can't have more than 30 books. You're still allowed to have as many books as you want. She just said that for her, having 30 books or more is something that is too much for her. And that that's something that she doesn't like in her house personally. So... If you pull out each individual book on your shelf, you can follow her method and still have more than 30 books, right? Because if you're following her method, all you have to do is pull out each individual book on the shelf, you touch each book, you ask the book if it sparks joy, and if more than 30 books are actively sparking joy for you at this very moment and having them on your shelf is sparking joy for you, then you can actively follow her advice and still have a lot of books. Her advice was never meant to make you have a house that was exactly like hers. The whole point is that everyone needs to figure out what they themselves like. And we're gonna actually look at it at a screenshot of her Netflix show where she puts this into practice because a lot of the stuff that people are criticizing her for right now is going against that. But first, let's take a look right here. So this tweet says, she doesn't even make fun of people that like stuff. She just wants people to find the joy in their stuff and rehome the things that don't bring them joy because no one should keep things that don't make them happy. She's a pure soul. So what does this screenshot say? It says, so she's talking to this guy in his office and he says, these pens bring me a lot of joy. So do I just keep them? Do I get more of them? And she said, yes, of course, keep them. And he said, sometimes I want to buy like 50. And Marie asks him, does that make you spark joy? Having 50 pens? And he says, yeah, it makes me really happy. And then she encourages him to keep the pens. So this guy's basically saying, I have 50 pens that might be too much clutter. And she's like, well, does each individual pen spark joy? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, well, then keep them. Because that's the whole purpose. It's for everyone to find individually what works best for them and an organizational system that they can put into place that is going to work for their life. And that starts with getting rid of the things that aren't working specifically for you instead of hoarding. And hoarding can be something that I fell into a lot. It's I, basically, I just credit her methods with really helping me get over a lot of the emotional impact that hoarding was having on me and on my life. And as you guys can see, this this home is, is not clean and clutter-free whatsoever. However, it does have my items that spark joy because collecting things sparks joy for me. But keeping around pairs of winter boots that the Chicago snow has completely ripped apart at the sole, that doesn't spark joy. So I get rid of those now. That's, that's the kind of thing that she's all about. So just the other week, an article came out about Marie Kondo that got a lot of people talking about her on Twitter specifically and on other forms of social media, and it has been extremely controversial. Basically, Marie Kondo became a mom a few years ago and in 2021 recently gave birth to her third child. After giving birth to her third child, Marie Kondo, you know, once again reassessed her priorities like a lot of us do and decided that cleaning was not the number one thing in her life. Her home's still organized, but 
Spending time with her kids is the most important thing, which I think a lot of parents would agree with. This is the article on The Guardian that came out, and then we're going to take a look at some of the reactions to what Marie said. So this is on The Guardian, and it says, Queen of Clean Marie Kondo says she has kind of given up on tidying at home. Decluttering guru reveals birth of third child has changed priorities. That sounds reasonable to me. Let's see what it says. The Queen of Clean Marie Kondo has said she has kind of given up on tidying since the birth of her third child. The world-renowned Japanese decluttering expert admitted that, with three children to look after, her family home was messy and tidying up was less of a priority now. My home is messy, but the way I'm spending my time is the right way for me at this time, at this stage in my life, she told the Washington Post. The tidying guru said her life had changed significantly since the arrival of her son in 2021. Up until now, I was a professional tidier, so I did my best to keep my home tidy at all times, she said, through an interpreter during an online webinar. I have kind of given up on that, in a good way for me, she said. Now I realize what is important to me, is enjoying spending time with my children at home. Kondo's latest book, Marie Kondo Karashi at Home, How to Organize Your Space and Achieve Your Ideal Life, centers on the Japanese concept of karashi, meaning way of life. Since becoming a mother to three children, she said her way of life had changed and her focus had shifted from organization to drawing on simple ways to bring happiness to everyday things. In the book, she writes, tidying up means dealing with all the things in your life. For Kondo, this means evaluating how you order your life and creating your own rhythm based on what fills you with joy. All right, guys, wh what's the issue? So the issue a lot of people were having with this is that we're going to take a look at some tweet examples in a second, but a lot of people were feeling bamboozled, I guess. They were saying, wait, 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 wait. You made your entire living telling us we have to keep our houses clean and tidy, and now you're admitting to not keeping your home clean and tidy any more than now that you have kids. Other people who also have kids started chiming in and saying things like, well, yeah, we know that keeping your house tidy is harder when you have kids. That's why we should struggled with it. Why did you tell us that we had to keep our homes tidy even though we had kids? I think a lot of this is based on a misinterpretation of what's actually in these books. So for example, the whole idea of her saying you have to have a certain organizational system, you have to keep everything perfectly organized, you have to keep everything tidy and having kids is no excuse for that. That wasn't what I gathered from her book at all. What I gathered was that if your house has a system in it where things can stay relatively organized and you spend time developing that system by learning how to clear things out when they're not serving their purpose for you anymore, then you will have a system set in place where you can run your house efficiently no matter how many people are living there. And obviously when you have kids, it's going to be harder to keep everything clean. My guess is that she kept her house like extremely clean before she had kids and now her house is like a little less than 100% spotless. But it's likely still pretty organized because if you read the book, you would know that the whole concept behind the book is not that her method is something you should be regularly doing every couple weeks or something like that. Her method is meant to be something that you spend a week of your life doing all in one chunk and it's about a lifestyle change. It's about reorganizing your systems in your life so that in the future you can have a better organizational system. Here, I'll give you an example of what I did. So one thing it says in The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up is that when you get into your house, you should empty your pockets or your purse or whatever. You should take out your keys, your wallet, your phone. You should take those things out and put them in their place immediately. And I know that that sounds pretty obvious, but it wasn't a habit that I had built in my life yet. So for example, when I would get home, sometimes I'd leave my phone on the coffee table. Sometimes I'd leave my wallet in my office. Sometimes I'd leave my keys in the kitchen. Like things were just all over the place. And half the time, now it would be time to go somewhere else. I need these things. Where can I find them? I don't know. So what I said was, okay, well, I need a system for somewhere to put these the second I get in the door. So in the front, like right by the front door, we installed this set of hooks and baskets that's right next to the front door. And ever since then, when I walk in the front door, when I come in, I t reach into my coat pockets, I take out my wallet, my phone, my keys, I hang my keys on the hook, and I put my wallet or and my ID or whatever else right into that little pocket in the basket. And I haven't lost them since. I haven't lost anything. So that's an example of a system that's in place. Now, when my life gets busier, I'm not going to have to install those hooks on the wall again. They're already there. It's a system that you set up to keep working. So this is not, nothing she's saying actually goes against the way that the book outlines how her method really works. We're going to take a look, though, at what some people are saying and how some people are grossly misinterpreting this. 
First, though, I would like to say, don't send hate to anyone on Twitter. Don't get in Twitter arguments from this video or anything like that. I just want to have a discussion about the things that are being said and why I agree or disagree with certain things. But this is not at all, like, if people are welcome to share their opinions online whenever, and none of this is an invitation to get involved in that. So please don't, our mommy will be disappointed. That's all I'm saying. So this guy says, vindication is mine! And with the headline, Marie Kondo admits she's kind of giving up on tidying after having three kids. Now, I guess there's two ways you could interpret this tweet. One of them is that this guy being like, hi, I knew Marie Kondo was a scammer all along. There's a more charitable interpretation you can have of this tweet, which is that perhaps this guy has... I don't know anything about him, but maybe his normal persona is talking about how hard life can be when you have kids and he feels like this is an example of someone finally backing him up on how much having kids can change your life. That's the most charitable interpretation. I, it's a little vague and I think it could lead to some not as good feedback towards her. But then we got some replies to this that I think were also just grossly misinterpreting what she said. For example, yeah, and she needs to let people have their books too. Again, she never said you couldn't have your books. She never said you couldn't have absolutely as many books as you wanted. Just that you should only keep the ones that spark joy. And if 500 books in your house sparks joy and you know what each one is and you're happy to have each one, then you can still follow her advice to the letter and still have a ton more books. She, she's not telling you you can't. You didn't read, you didn't read her book. If you like having books so much, why didn't you actually read her book before you criticized her? It sounds like you don't like books that much if you can't even read the book of the person you want to make up shit about. I love this person right here. Just curious. Did you read the book? Dude, that's how I'm going to start every interaction with people. Just curious, did you read the book before anything? Because she makes a point how different people are going to want different size libraries and how it's up to you to figure that out. Boom, we're giving that a like. This person says she can take my book collection from my cold dead hands. That's all I remember about her. I didn't watch the show. Well, look at you admitting that you didn't actually consume any of her content before making up what it said. Congratulations, straw man of the day goes to you. Has she given up on that no more than 30 books nonsense too? She never said that. It's this weird lie that's been circulating. She said she only keeps about 30 books personally, but people have different libraries and that's cool. Boom, we're giving that a like. There's nothing that annoys me more than people who are criticizing someone for something that didn't happen. People there's like that one tweet that's like, 90% of Twitter is people making up a guy to get mad at and then getting mad at the guy that they made up. That's what happens so often, it's so annoying. Also, this meme is just funny. What happens when the kids no longer spark joy? <laughs> Marie Kondo says, you do not spark joy. That's funny, that's funny. This is another tweet that I saw about this. I'm pretty sure the person who tweeted this has deleted that tweet. But I'm, I, I didn't like this and I think it was, it was absolutely wrong, so here's why. So this person says, she admits she has kind of given up on tidying after three kids. Where is the official apology to those of us who she influenced to make our clothes into little envelopes while we had three kids? So first of all, the word influenced here is like, dude, are you like... Are, are you like a, a high school senior at a party where someone's offering you weed but you're, you don't want to try it and someone someone influenced you into doing it and now you're under the influence? Like, is that what we're talking about here? Dude, she offered up some cleaning methods and you didn't have to take them. And I thought her cleaning methods were good. There's no one method that's going to work for everybody. One ring to rule them all. But it's like, what you want an apology for what? The fact that she taught you a folding method and you didn't like it? This person here gets it. I am sick of how people talk about Marie Kondo. Her whole thing was literally don't own things if you do not enjoy or need to own them. Organize the things you do enjoy owning in such a way that you can access them easily. And people acted like she was killing off firstborn. It's literally all she said, for real. For real. Let's give that a like. Oh, look at this. I don't believe these people ranting about her have actually read her book. I am a maximalist collector of things and it was a game changer for me. Keep what you love doesn't mean you have to be a perfect minimalist. Shout out to you, fellow maximalist collector who uh, also thinks Marie Kondo's advice is life changing. It's almost like you can take what works and not take what doesn't work. And you can even use everything in her advice and make it work if you're following her advice, which is to figure out what works for you. It's like such inoffensive advice, I don't even get it. And honestly, this whole situation for her with saying, I want to spend more time with my kids than I spend cleaning, that 
is perfectly in line with all the advice she's been given so far because it's what in your life sparks joy? What helps you live in the moment in the here and now? Because once again, if you haven't read the book, you might not know that a big premise of the entire book was this discussion of the past, present, and future. That a lot of reasons we hoard things is that we're attached to the past or we're afraid of the future. We're afraid of moving forward without something from our past. And I found that to be true a lot because we often have this anxiety of like, what if I need this in the future? What if I get rid of this and then I, I don't have it anymore? Things like that. Or we're attached to something from the past that we know doesn't really serve any purpose in our lives anymore, but the memories of it are, we feel like we need to have it, even if those memories aren't serving us in the same way, right? So a lot of it is about when we clear out what we don't actually actively want or need right now, we are able to live in the moment a little bit more. And that's kind of what she's saying here too, about being present in the moment with her kids, about the fact that it's not only about having a clean house, it's also about being with your kids and being with her kids is the thing that sparks joy for her. So she's keeping that because it sparks joy. It is all perfect, like she never contradicted herself even. I also like this tweet just because it's funny. Horror movie about Marie Kondo realizing her kids don't spark joy anymore. Some of the other criticisms I saw of her online were things along the lines of, well, the very fact that a decluttering guru and a cleaning guru exists is just out here putting more pressure on the moms in society to have a perfect home. And... While I agree that it's not good to pressure people to live lives to a certain aesthetic or that you should feel pressured to have to have your home in a certain way, Marie Kondo's existence does not cause that. I don't know why people feel threatened by the idea of someone being out here offering you potential solutions. There's no requirement that you follow them. And if you don't want to, you need to just have the confidence to say, hey, I don't want to follow Marie Kondo's advice and that's okay. Not everybody does and that's fine. I personally like her a lot. I don't think she did anything wrong. And if you don't like her advice, that's totally fine. But I don't think it's fair to make up things that she never said and to get mad at her and pretend she's some kind of hypocrite about things just because she made a personal decision for her own life that was best for her life and didn't even really go against her brand at all. Those are my thoughts on Marie Kondo. I'm curious what you guys think as well. Please let me know in the comments below. I really do like her work and maybe I'll read this new book she has coming out. We'll see. But her advice really has helped me and as you can see, it definitely hasn't caused me to change who I am whatsoever. I pretty much have things exactly the same way. So I appreciate that advice from her. It's helped me get over a lot of my hoarding tendencies and helped me really make sure that the things I have in my home are things that are going to give me a good life moving forward. But I'm curious your thoughts as well. Otherwise, I will see you guys again later this week for some more videos. But in the meantime, please keep on supporting small businesses, keep on reading books, and have a fantastic start to your week. Bye! Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it.